Ideas, imagination, inspiration, macro world. Here's your host, Ray Scott. So it's a beautiful sunny autumn day and you're walking along looking at the trees and you see the sun shining through those beautiful leaves. It's always a great sight. Today we're going to bring it indoors and do some macro photography and we're going to use that same concept to highlight our leaves. Back lit leaves. Now we've done backlit leaves on a previous uh, macro video, but this is going to be a little different because what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and get some leaves that are multicolored. At least that's the project that we're doing today here. Uh, I'm looking for leaves that have as many colors in them as possible and then we're going to come in close and combine that beautiful color with all the veins and all of the texture and everything that goes on with leaves. Now I don't know what's around your area in your parks or your woods or maybe even your backyard. You may not have multicolored leaves. You may have something that is more uh, monochrome or something like that. But that's what we're trying to find today. So the idea is to get out there, get some leaves. What I've done is I've, I've gotten the leaves. I got the leaves a few days ago. I put them in books, stack the books on top of each other and really flatten the leaves so that they will be really flat. We won't have depth of field problems or anything like that and you have a good flat surface to work with. So uh, before all the leaves are covered with snow or whatever is going on in your area, get out there, get some leaves that have as many colors as possible or whatever you want to do with those leaves. Get them, press them, and then, when I say press them, put them in the books or whatever, and then we can work on them. So let's get started on that project. It's going to be a lot of fun. So as we get the project started, you can see that I'm using a light table, an old light table that I used to use for looking at my slides. Uh, but you don't have to use something like that. It's very convenient and I, I like it. But the last time I did uh, backlit leaves, what I used was that glass table that you see the light table sitting on and I shone a light underneath the table and through the leaf. So that worked great. You can also use, if you want a more spotlight type effect, you can use your um, the light that you have, the flashlight that you have on your phone and it kind of, uh, you can move it kind of close to the leaf and you can sort of spotlight it uh, just a little bit. So you can have all kinds of different effects. You can use a flashlight, anything uh, really works. You don't have to use a glass table. You can use just a piece of glass and support it on each side with something and then put the leaf in the middle. All kinds of different ways you can do it. And you set it up like that. You have your camera on a tripod shooting straight down for that stability and you get the, you, you keep your camera lens square to the plane of the leaf and you get maximum depth of field that way it can really work extremely well for you. All right, so you saw the setup and how important it is to keep everything as flat as possible. Uh, throughout this whole video, by the way, I'm using an aperture of f11. Now I could have gone to f16, but I figured, you know, something f11 will be enough. I can use my lens at its optimum uh, quality. f11 is a great aperture for my particular lens. And so here's the first shot. Now, you'll take note that you have uh, some white coming through. That, of course, is the light table. That's the light coming through some of these little tears and holes in the leaf. I could have cloned them out or, you know, gotten rid of them if I wanted to. Um, I left them there. This is the leaf as it was. Um, my project here was multicolored, although you'll see in a few. <laughs> I kind of got away from that. I just took leaves that I thought would look quite beautiful. It's the veins that get me. I don't know about you, but it's it's the veins. It's almost like some kind of road work or a map from, from, the, from the sky that you're looking down on this planet or something, and you have all these intricate roads and things like that. You can, you can use your imagination on that, but you have the veins and then these little, oh, it, it's just beautiful. All this, this texture and fiber and everything that comes through. Now, again, again, let's go back to the color. That's what I wanted. I wanted some green here and you see some yellow and some orange and some red. So, and even some, it's like a bit of purple there on the, on the far left. I don't know. And the veins themselves. I mean, you could actually say there were maybe five colors in this, but you know, two or three to me in one leaf is pretty darn good. So that's my first shot. Now in the second one, we'll give it two colors. I mean, there's probably three if you want to include the veins, but we're looking at basically yellow and kind of a reddish color there. And you know, it's important. And let's just go back for a moment. 
let's not forget the composition in all of this and using the veins as a compositional tool as you can see in this one the first one that i showed you um, you have the veins ra radiating out from you know a bit of the corner but on this next one i have it kind of fanning out the, the veins are kind of fanning out from the center bottom center of the image play around with it have lots of fun again looking at the all of the texture and those oh all of that little detail that's what really really gets me third one now this one's not multicolored very much at all but it was that red it was that it, it just like popped and that's because of the light coming through and that's the same effect that we talk about when we're taking a walk on a sunny day in the fall and you see that light coming through the leaves it's just beautiful and this is what we're doing with backlighting these leaves like this it, it it kind of recreates that that feeling we get with the sun coming through a leaf except that we're up really really close and look at the detail and that little piece of tension on the bottom left hand corner okay a different color lighter it's that yellow it's something that's completely different than everything else in the image and it offers just a little bit of tension and a little bit of i don't know a little bit of a dynamic there again composition i look at the, the way the veins are radiating out bang right in your face um wow it almost looks like a spider doesn't it <laughs> it look it looks like a spider green and orange and then the kind of a blackish brownish spider effect there that has a certain dynamic to, to me that floats my boat a little bit but it's this next picture the next image is my favorite it's my own personal favorite because it's so multicolored and so detailed look at that oh you've got green you've got yellow you've got orange you've got red um and then it's all of that what i call the quote unquote the road work from the sky look i mean it looks like and the veins are going off in all kinds of different directions then you have all these little white lines going around everywhere it's nature to me at its best it's just beautiful beautiful stuff um all we're doing as photographers is capturing what is there in front of us and we're seeing it and presenting it a little bit differently than what we normally would the way we would see it right because that's the beauty of macro photography as we see things that we in a different way than we normally would see them a little bit closer same image a little bit closer depends on what kind of effect you want same leaf but a different angle the vein coming in from the side again you play around you do it the way you want but my favorite image still goes back to this one that's just the one that that to me is that's it so as you can see there were all kinds of ways that we could backlight these leaves the point is to get that light shining through to highlight all of that incredible detail and color uh, it's it's a, a beautiful thing to look at i think now before i let you go uh, i want to encourage you also uh, when you go out there to get leaves that are multicolored or whatever project you're working on for yourself depending on what's around you also pick up some tattered leaves or leaves that have a few holes or imperfect leaves things like that and i say that because in a video coming up very soon, we're going to be looking at tattered leaves and the effect that you can get with those is incredible too. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you to shoot small, but think big.